So why do you have neck pain? Maybe you wake up with it or maybe you have it at the end of the day, but you don't remember doing anything to cause it. And when you do have it, even more importantly is how do you get rid of it? What can you do about it? Well, welcome to Back Talk with Dr. Ryan. I'm Dr. Ryan Wolfert, and on each of these episodes, I address the most common questions and misconceptions that people have about spinal health and back pain, how you can strengthen your spine, and how you can be your own guarantee for your health and your life. So today, we're going to be talking about neck pain. So let's dive into this because first, let's try to understand the neck a little bit more. You know, it, there sh should be a certain shape to your neck. So there's this natural curve when you look at it from the side, it should have this, it's a, it's a half of a circle, essentially. And it's called a cervical lordosis. So lordosis, that's the normal positioning, natural curve that your neck should have. And you want to think about your neck. And when it has that nice natural curve, it, it balances the head weight, right? It balances the weight of your head. So think about your, your head like a bowling ball, right? When we have that curve, that bowling ball, that weight of the bowling ball is absorbed. That, that stress is absorbed by the lower, lower dose. It's like a shock absorber that protects your spine, protects your spinal cord. But what happens all too often is with the modern day habits that we have where we're hunched over our phones or on the computers or propped up on pillows or, or sitting on the couch being hunched over, you lose that natural lordosis. You lose that natural curve of your neck. So when it straightens out, it's like, again, removing the shock absorber. Think about your car. If you remove the shocks, the shock absorbers from there, it makes the impact that much harder on yourself inside the car, but also on the car. You, you remove the, the curve of the neck, the natural normal curve that absorbs the shock, and then it puts stress on the spinal cord as well. But just movement wise, every movement becomes harder. It creates more tension on your spine and also the spinal cord. So think about like a rubber band. Your spinal cord is protected, right? Inside your spine, inside your inside your neck. So it's nice and relaxed. Think about a rubber band, a, a nice a rubber band that's relaxed inside that structure. But now when you straighten the curve, when you straighten your neck from either accidents or a lot of times in our day and age now is these forward flex postures. Well, what happens is that spinal cord, it gets stretched like a rubber band. So it gets tense and tight and can't deliver those messages. So your body alerts you in any way that it can, which pain is the most obvious and it's the one that we tolerate the least as humans. But that leads to, again, when you lose that curve, the neck pain, the stiffness, headaches, even numbness tingling down the arms, even, you know, problems lower. But let's just stick with the neck for now. You know, one study, showed in the Journal of Manipulative and Physiologic Therapeutics. I don't expect you to remember all that. I'll put a, a image so you can see that. A study showed that the cervical lordosis below 20 degrees. So the normal, another study found, is between 30 and 42 degrees. So if this curve is less than 20 degrees, it significantly increases your chance of chronic neck pain. And even if it's completely straight, okay, so like zero degrees or in the opposite direction, that increases the time, it's you're 18 times more likely to have chronic neck pain than no neck pain. So right there, that shows you how important this curve is for your spine. So when that happens, and it affects not only the neck, but affects all the way down. Because sometimes we have to figure out, not sometimes, we always have to figure out why is the neck getting straight? Why is it in a poor position? It could be coming from your rib cage area, your thoracic spine, because that will direct many times what your head and neck does. So that's why we have to look at the full spine. And that's why here can affect mid back, can affect low back and stretch the spinal cord all the way down and put stress and strain even on the low back because of the positioning, the biomechanics and the mechanics of your body. Just like if we, again, think about a bowling ball. So the head's like a 15 pound bowling ball. And now if we put it out away from the center of gravity, your low back is even gonna have to work harder. Just like if you had a bowling ball or a weight in your hands and you 
had your arms outstretched, your shoulders are going to be working harder. You're going to feel it in the shoulders and arms, but you're not holding it with your, you know, you're holding it in your hands, right? But you're still feeling it here. That's how the effects of your body tries to compensate. All right. So now we talked about what the problem many times is, is a straightening of that cervical lordosis. Well, what are we going to do about it? Well, you know, if you've seen other videos that I've done, the EAT method, E-A-T-N, eaten. We're going to really focus on the E-A-T part. So the exercise, the adjusting your lifestyle and, your, and, and the traction. But exercise is key. Movement is key. Regular, regular stretching and strengthening and exercises for the neck and upper back can help prevent these issues and neck pain. And I'm actually going to link to a uh, neck exercise video that I did. So you can definitely check that out. I'll also, also link to that in the description. But I want to move on to adjusting your lifestyle and adjusting your postures, you know, awareness of what your posture is throughout the day. So are you slunched over or sl slunched? I <laughs> combined slouched and hunched. So sl slouched over your computer or at your desk. Are you propped up on pillows, either on the couch or laying down in bed? Are you, you know, here's one that I see quite often out and about, maybe in a, a store or even just people walking around the neighborhood. Are you, like if you're in line somewhere, are you looking at your phone? Is it down towards your, towards your hips rather than lifted up in front of you so you're not creating that slouched posture that the straightening of the neck are you sitting slumped over on the couch playing a game on your ipad candy crush or whatever the game is now or, or solitaire for over 20 to 30 minutes that is enough to start the process of straightening the spine and then if you keep doing that over and over again again it just accelerates that degeneration it accelerates the straightening of the neck and the uh the basically progress to neck pain if you don't have it already. So you want to, when you are during your life, when you're on the couch, when you're, you know, just walking around, when you're on any devices, you want to make sure that your head is up over your shoulders, is up over your hips, okay? You want to keep the head up as much, as much as you can. Now, if you can't get to that position, that tells you, all right, maybe it's progressed too far and you might need a little bit of help with that. But the, the T part I want to move on to and spend a little bit more time on this because this is often overlooked. The T of the Eaton therapy is traction. So because of the repetitive stress and strain that you know we're often putting on our necks and on our spine and on our posture, well, it breaks down the spine and also especially the ligaments that are holding the spinal bones together, the vertebrae together. So traction helps to retrain these ligaments and also the muscles, but especially the ligaments to hold the bones in the, the natural healthy curve into that healthier position. Exercises alone might not be enough, like the one I, I linked to. It might not be enough. It's a good start, and, and those are great, but because these don't it's not under the load long enough to retrain the ligaments, that's where traction comes into play. And I, I like analogies. So think about a, uh, a a jar of thick molasses, right? So you got it, you know, in its normal, you know, it's it's all that molasses down at the bottom of the jar. And now you start tipping it. Does it move immediately? Is it like water where it just goes? No, it takes time as we're tipping it upside down for it to start to take that new position. It's the same thing or very similar with the spine and the ligaments. We need to put it in that healthy position, hold it there for a period of time for it to reform and remodel and remold. Again, another analogy similar to putting braces on teeth. They need to be there in that position for a period of time for it to do that. Now, I... I went over this, uh, I, I created this spinal hygiene mini class with this Eaton uh, uh, methodology. So definitely if, if you want that, type in spine and I'll make sure I, I get that spinal hygiene mini class to you. There's no charge for it at all. So how do we do this? Now, how do we reform using this traction? Well, in the Journal of Medi Medical Sciences, they did this study showing the impact of one, using this device, it's called a Denerol, Denerol, not Demerol, not the drug, but it's a, a spinal remodeling device. And it used that to see 
Okay, one, what is the impact of spinal cervical spinal rehab using this and then also other methods and what, what were the results on neck pain and disability especially? So they had two groups with non-specific neck pain. So not, you know, not necessarily disc problems or numbness and tingling, but just these unexplained non-specific neck pain. What can help with that? So they split them into two groups. One received traditional physical therapy, which was you know, infrared, ultrasound, tens therapy, and manual therapy like mobilization with the Denerol. So that was the experimental group. And then the other group only received the traditional physical therapy. So not with the Denerol. So what it found was with the Denerol group, there were significant improvements in both neck pain and neck disability compared to the physical therapy group, okay? So the PT, for short, only group, it actually did get improvement. It's 49% improvement in pain and about 16% improvement in neck function. So decreasing neck disability. But when you add the Denerol into it, this type of device that can only be used under the supervision of somebody who knows how to use it and to prescribe it for you. So don't go on Amazon and try to get one of these without knowing what your spine is. So with the Denerol, they improved 62% in pain and almost 40% in their neck function. So adding the Denerol to standard physical therapy significantly enhances the pain relief and also the functional recovery that you can get. So again, the motion that you get in, in your neck and your, your ability to, to do life, <laughs> to, to live your life. Now, like I said, if you are experiencing a lot of neck pain and it's just not going away and you want to learn more about Okay, how to use one of these. The best doctors to contact are chiropractic biophysics physicians. So CBP, they've done the research. They've, you know, learned how the spine directly impacts your overall health and especially neck pain and can instruct you on specific exercises and traction that you would need to restore the normal curve of your neck and how much improvement that you could expect. So again, I that's what I practice is CBP. That's what I use, the technique that I I use, uh, but there's they're all over the country. Uh, I'll supply the, the link in the description as well on how you can uh, see if there's somebody in your area. And if not, then definitely reach out to me. Now, remember neck pain. I know it sounds odd because if you have neck pain, why aren't people looking at the actual structure of your neck? But unfortunately they don't. They look at a lot at other things. But as you can see, neck pain often stems from misalignment, these imbalances, the straightening of the neck curve. And it's not just about muscle strain. The muscle strains and has a chronic strain to it and gets tight because of the positioning of the neck. It has to overwork itself. So if we correct the spinal structure, strengthen the ligament, strengthen the muscles as well. And if you need professional help from a CBP qualified trained physician, definitely do that. Uh, in the meantime, what I also want you to do, definitely it, it, type in spine in the comments if you want this spinal hygiene mini class that I created. And it'll help give you the, the framework and uh, uh, strategies on exercises and adjustments and how to do even use like a towel for the traction of the neck to get you started.